Welcome to Netflix and Phil. Today I want to introduce you to my special guest. She is an improviser. She is a host with the most. She is an actress. And I can also call her my friend. It's Adrienne McLean. Give her a round of applause. Yay! <laughs> it has been like eons since I've seen you in person and I apologize for that. Oh, it's okay. We were supposed to go to the drag show. We never made it. We have to still put that on our list of things to do. I know. And I was going to mention if there's anything that we have in common, it's a fascination and affinity for all things drag race. So <laughs> I have to say though, I'm, I'm really bad. I'm so behind. Uh -huh. I'm so behind, but like, I definitely love drag queens. Like, like, I feel like I should be a drag queen in another life for sure. Like I love them. I <laughs> Love that. Well, as you know, I kind of occasionally do a little drag myself, but I think bottom line, everyone's a drag queen at heart. <laughs> okay. <Good>. <laughs> Thank you for taking time. I am so happy to see kind of your, what I would call your career direct trajectory, excuse me. And you are in a lot of uh, films, television, uh, you do a lot of work and I'm just honestly, Adrian, so proud of you. And we'll get into some detail about what you have done. But first, I want to kick things off. Um, you may recall, I think my first introduction to you was when you and I worked at a little show called Alibi. <laughs> what do you remember about that? <laughs> Alibi, I have to say, that was some great training. <laughs> Tell me why. Tell me why. I, I would agree. Tell me why. Yes. Because I mean, you, okay. So if you guys aren't familiar with the show Alibi, um, it was a show that it was a drinking, what, what do they call it? They called it a drinking, um, I think, I, I think, I think it was like, it was like, it was like a drinking scavenger hunt or something like they use like that kind of word. So you had to like solve clues to like get to like your next location. And then you would like meet an actor who would then like try to help you get your like the next clue kind of a thing. And then we, then and like you always were at the pizza parlor. So I was always starving. You got to eat the entire time. And I was like, great. I was, I had a couple of heat strokes. Like, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, cause we're doing this in a hundred degree weather. And I'm like jumping around like a crazy person while you get to sit inside of an air conditioned place and eat pizza. Were you the show girl? Because I know some of us rotated through different parts, but were you, you were the initial character, which was- I was always the show girl. Every once in a blue moon, I would be like the very last character. Okay. But like mainly I was the show girl who was the first person that you met. But I was the first person that you met. And then like, I gave you like the first clues to like send you on your way. Um, great concept. I mean- I love the fact that like they created this, like uh, Matt Donnelly, Ivan, you know what I mean? Like Karina, like all of them, like, like kudos to them for doing this. Um, but yeah, like talking about wrangling cats. Oh, <laughs> it was, And by the time they got to me, they got drunker through, as they progressed through downtown Las Vegas and eventually the strip. And by the time they got to the end with, Karina, who you mentioned, they were kind of like crazy. These they were great. I mean, yeah, like you got drinks and like then food, but you're also like in 100 degree heat. So yeah, it was definitely an adventure. But yeah, I thought it was even more that though, because I don't remember ever because like we never got to see the other actors like while we were there. So it was so, yeah. it was well, and it was a great testament to your improv skills. And I know I had to lean into mine for that role because you were just dealing with a. Uh, people who were visiting Vegas and you were incorporating them into a mystery. So I mentioned improv. I do want to share with you that I also spent quite a bit of time with you uh, in a venture that was called Vegas Theater Hub. And we, hey, we, <laughs> remind me, because again, the memories are fading. Were we both in the house troupe or, or what yes. do you recall about that? So remind yes, me. Yes, we were both in the house troupe and then you eventually became our teacher at one point, I believe. Oh, yes. I, will say, I will say I have very fond memories overall of um, Vegas Theater Hub and you know and I hope that like something else comes up about it because having is that a cat or a dog it's Sorry. a dog that's <laughs> Sahara like, oh. she's new to me I, I only adopted her a few months ago but Sahara meet Adrian Sahara how are you uh but yeah I mean overall like it was such a great experience and I and I really you know want to you know uh just 
shout out to Darren and um, and his wife for definitely, you know, bringing this really quality improv school to Las Vegas, which is something that I wish we had another one, you know, um, we, 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 we do, we do have, we do have comedy sports. So I will say, I'll say that there's that. Um, but like, I felt like in my time, it was like, yay, we have this. And like, I had a full curriculum and things like that. So yes, we also have comedy sports as well. And, uh, I have spent enough time in Las Vegas is to know that improv, like, is like cyclical and there's the highs and there's the absence and there's the highs of where there's everybody's involved and then it disappears. So yeah. it was great that uh, Darren did commit to that for, for those years and we got to meet each other. And if I can pay you a compliment, um, what you brought to the stage and you bring to your television and film roles is a real gravitas. You brought serious improv to the masses. And I thank you. I think that's where you, you really excelled, Adrian. So it was always a pleasure to work with you on stage because it's easy in improv to make it about farts or whatever, but you you took it a level beyond and I really appreciated that about working with you. Thank you. I mean, improv <laughs> is definitely, like, I'm, I'm grateful for my improv roots. And as I, 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 if I can tell anybody, like, you need to take improv classes um, without a doubt. Like, it definitely is something that I think all actors should take at least one at some point. <laughs> I appreciated I appreciated when you skewed serious, though. I really liked it. So speaking of improv, feel free to tell me maybe that appeared in some of your roles. So uh, the one I want to kick off that I recently watched um, was a little show called uh, Amber round and you played opposite Michael Yo. So I was wondering what it was like to meet him and, and what it was like to work on that production. Oh my gosh. Like that was an amazing production. So I got to, so it was in Utah. I do a lot of my work out of Utah. So I'm really grateful for the Utah market. Um, and um, I got to play the love interest of Michael Yo. Um, but it was just a lot of fun. I mean, everybody was so nice. Um, I got to work um with Rachel as my director for the first part of the episode, but we weren't able to finish all of this, all the um, the shots. So I came back for a third day and I got to work with Bonnie Hunt. So like I grew up watching Jumanji. So you know what I mean? Like for me, it was like kind of surreal and she was such a lovely person and she was the showrunner and the, um, and the, you know, creator and writer of the show. So it was just so lovely to be able to work with these two amazing female directors and Michael Yo and I still keep in contact. Um, he actually, contact each other for like acting things and things like that still. So, I mean, I'm just grateful to have made that relationship and friendships with him and to get to work on this show, which I think was, I mean, it's based off a book, which really just talks about how kids deal with divorce and things like that. So I think it was like a great topic and it was, it was done kind of in a fun way. So I'm really proud of that. I think that's huge. And I always like to celebrate when there are, are women behind the camera. You mentioned Bonnie Hunt um, and et cetera. And I think it's huge uh, to have that in filmmaking and celebrate it. Did you get to improvise at all during that production? Or? No, no, you do not improvise on TV. <laughs> that's funny. Well, if you do get to improvise during any of these that I mentioned, let me know. But I was just very curious if that, if that happened. Whenever I've done television, uh -huh. Know your lines, know all of them, backwards and forwards, like do not play. I remember I did a, I did an episode of television and I put the V and the A in like the wrong place. Like, and I was like, oh, okay, y'all serious. Okay. That's terrifying because I wouldn't know that going into it. So thank you for sharing that little behind yeah. the scenes tidbit. Yeah, no, it's serious. Like they are serious when it comes to like, know the words. Because like, again, you have to understand like, we're all artists. And so a writer is writing these episodes and they are, um, they are just as much about their, their words as we are, you know what I mean? As, as like, as like we are as artists. So it's like, be true to their words. So, yeah. That's huge. Thank you for sharing that because it, I would have shown up on set and just like made stuff up and would have gotten in trouble. Mm, that so. is not an option. <laughs> okay. Well, let's keep it in the family film uh, arena. And I want to talk about, you mentioned Utah and I think this production actually occurred there. Um, you were in a Hallmark movie. Is that accurate? Yeah. Holly and Ivy. I want to know how you got involved with that. And I, also, I'm just very curious uh, since these often release during Christmas, when do Hallmark movies get made. <laughs> That's actually a great question. They get made in the summertime when it's blazing hot. So we are like, I had, and like, it's, 
like that was again that was I got an, another female director I mean I'm just so grateful to be able to work with so many just amazing talented women um and um yes we were in July and so I only had one day on that I did all my shots I had two different scenes but I did all of it in one day but it's amazing how I was sitting behind a desk but they don't like to show their legs in Hallmark movies and so I had to wear I had to wear tights like full on tights <laughs> And I'm under a desk and I was just like, like every like, like in between the takes, like trying to cool off. And I was like, can I take the tights off? And they're like, well, it's part of your costume. So no. And I'm like, but I'm under a desk. It's amazing to see like how, like, like if you look, like if you, because I have the, I have the clips on my, um, I have the clips definitely on my Instagram or my, um, on my IMDb, if you guys want to check it out, but we're in this like conference room <laughs> and they have like this wide shot so you can see it. It looks very, you know, very big and like, you know, we're having like this intimate conversation across this desk. But to get our over the shoulder shots, we were, it was like five people like in a space of like this, like they had the cameraman behind me and like behind her. And like, so even though we had like this large room, we are all squished together. So it's like movie magic. And we're all just like, it's so hot. <laughs> like, you know, Cause they have to turn the AC off too, because you know, like we can't like have the AC going on for sound. <laughs> so, so yeah. So just understand movie magic is a real thing. Like you don't realize like how many things are manipulated and like look to make it look you know what I mean like it's like this like easygoing thing where we're all just like okay focus say your lines the beat of sweat make up <laughs> you know what I mean? this is huge I love that insight so if you're a fan of Hallmark movies know that they were probably filmed during the summer and the actors were dying <laughs> <laughs> It's it's great to do what you love. So like we're all grateful for it. And like you just have to know. But yeah, I remember the main actress, uh uh Paris, she was definitely like, she was like, oh, like we were like, we're doing like snow scenes like in the middle of July. So yeah. That's so curious to me. And I wonder if like, do they ship in the snow? How does this happen? I don't <laughs> I wasn't there for that. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean it's Utah. So I don't know if they just went up to the mountains and got to grab some or like or if they just like did fake snow, which they probably did fake snow, which like you know, if you ever see like in a movie like snow snow on the coat yeah that's fake <laughs> I, I believe it well thank you for that insight well I want to take a, a moment from that you mentioned Bonnie Hunt earlier and you got to work on a uh, televised program called Queen Sugar thank and you. behind that are some big names why don't you tell us so yeah so Ava DuVernay's show uh Queen Sugar, and it's produced by Oprah Winfrey on the Oprah Winfrey Network so I mean that was my very first television credit and can I just say I am beyond grateful. Another female director. Wow, I've really had a lot of female directors. I am so grateful. I'm giving it a <laughs> <Yes. laughs> I'm so grateful for all the women that have been casting me. Uh -huh. um, so yes, definitely nervous. I've grown from then. Um, but what an experience. I got to go down to New Orleans to shoot. I'd never been to New Orleans before. Um, it's an amazing city. Um, yeah, it was my first TV credit and on, an, on a show that is just like powerhouse actresses and actors on that show and run by, you know, the queen herself, Oprah and, you know, Ava DuVernay. So yes. So you recently appeared in a movie that was shot entirely in Vegas, if I'm not mistaken. Right. And you posted it on Instagram, a clip of your uh, scene from that film. You got to play opposite one of my favorite actors who I have a small crush on. <laughs> uh, Dermot Mulroney and I mentioned how much I like him and I'm just curious you responded about how it was to work with him so please share oh, what was it like he was lovely like one of those people that like you're taking a picture and like he'll come and like photobomb because as an actor especially like when you're working with like like a like a known celebrity I mean t you know like movies that like I grew up watching you know what I mean or like not even but you know like, like movies that are so near and dear to my heart like and it's like you've seen him all these years and then you're like well I don't want to ask I don't be that person like you know like they've got their space but he'll crash the photo he's like come on let's take a picture and so it's just like like that's just such a joy to work with someone like that who just understands that like you're kind of having that like well we don't really know how to you know behave but again we're all people and I think that's like one of the biggest lessons that actors need to know we're all people but again we all have our own processes. We all have our own way of working in the business. And so I don't know if he's currently like prepping for his next scene or things like that. So I don't want to be that person to just 
barge in and kind of ask. Like he was just so lovely to work with. Um, and the Al Bravo team is is doing really big things in Las Vegas. I mean, um, Quincy is the casting director and Al Bravo is the main producer and they are just pumping out a lot of really amazing films here in Las Vegas. So I was really grateful to be a part of that one. Um, and hopefully there'll be more. And I, I appreciate hearing you say that because you and I are both local to the Vegas community, but more and more, and we have um, the idea of perhaps even a studio being built here. Now that Mark Wahlberg is here, there's a lot of talk about uh, filmmaking becoming more permanent here in Las Vegas. And I understand it's cheaper to film here. And I imagine it's probably cheaper to film in Utah as well. I don't know, but. I mean, um, uh, there's, there's talks of um, Kevin Costner building a studio in St. George, which okay. for locals is like two hours away. So with the Stony studio and like Kevin Costner studio, I mean, it's really becoming a great place to be able to do a lot of film and television. Um, if I'm going to be honest, because I'm going to be honest, be honest. Uh, I really feel that the market of talent in Las Vegas needs to rise to the level of this um, this, you know, like we we got the stuff coming, but if we want to keep it and actually have uh, locals getting a part of these projects, we got to rise. You heard it here on Netflix and Phil. Rise to the occasion. So you mentioned Mr. Kevin Costner. Uh, you've had some experience with something that's due to come out, which I hope you can talk about. Tell me about a project that is in the works. It's a two-parter, mind you. It's a four-parter. Is a four parter? Oh four my gosh! Yeah, mind blown. So, talk to me about Horizon and your experience in that film. Beyond grateful to be a part of it. I got to be. I got to work on the project over a three month span, um, and I, I'm in the movie for about five minutes. But I, I mean, I got to work directly with Sienna Miller. Um, Kevin Costner was our director. Talk about people just being again like you. You see these people, and you're you know you're thinking, okay, well, I can't really you know like like really approach them and things like that. Kevin Costner is such a warm person and everybody that I've talked to has the same feelings about that. When we talk about like being on set with him, I mean, I have a scene where I put a gun up and he was like, and he was like, Oh, you're blocking your face. Like come watch, you know, come watch the, uh, the dailies and things like that. And so for a director to stop production while like they're, you know, fixing the lights and things like that and have the actors watch like what is actually being filmed and like play it back is so valuable. And I mean, I've never had a director do that before. And to have Kevin Costner as my director, like pull all of us and have us watch the scenes so that as an actor, you can say, oh, I am blocking my face. Oh, um, you know, if we're, if we're doing this again, like, let me make sure that I do this kind of thing. I mean, such just, I'm so grateful to be able to work with him. And as I said, his whole team was just amazing. I mean, three months of of working with these people that were just lovely making this billion dollar project. I mean, it's crazy. And on the opposite side, we were freezing. <laughs> like, so we actually had like tents to like keep us warm with like heaters because it was, it was snowing. It was like in the zero, but like, but because we were doing this over three months, like it had gotten colder and colder as we were shooting in Moab. So yeah, it's, it's amazing to have this, these experiences. And and to give some insight, it's about it takes place during the Civil War. Is that accurate? So it's the eighteen hundreds. So it's the eighteen hundreds talking about the pioneers and things like that. And so originally, I will say the originally the character was written as Caucasian, and so I just was like not, you know, thinking about it. And then they were like, oh, we actually want to add some diversity to it. And so then they brought in um, some diverse actors, and I got cast with my with my uh, partner Antonio Charity, who. Um, who played my husband, um, he got to play Joseph, and I'm Joseph's wife. <laughs> I love that. So now if Joseph Joseph's wife had a name, what would it be? Well, he always says it's Mary, because we're Mary and Joseph. That's what he is. Again, he was like. <laughs> so we definitely talked about it, trust me. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll go with that. But if you want to change your mind, you can, I think. So. <laughs> I like it. I'm, I'm credited as Joseph's wife. I'll just be oh. Joseph. We talk about the 1800s. The fact that I was even, I was, you know, I was even able to be in this movie is is amazing to me. So I was like, and yeah, congratulations on that. And 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 I'm, I love hearing these great experiences you've had with Dermot Mul Mulroney and Kevin Costner because I'm sure sometimes you've encountered fellow actors or directors, etc., that perhaps were not so nice to work with or or were horrific. So I'm gonna. 
use that to segue into what I often see you in and I appreciate uh, immensely is that I see you in the occasional horror film. One that was just recently released and one that I just watched that had a lot of local talent in it uh, called Scare Me, which I think was also filmed in a remote area <laughs> uh, of our state. Uh, yes. tell, me about, tell me about Scare Me. So Scare Me is actually a really funny one. Um, so I actually did the short film for this project that ended up being like an, I, do they call it an anthology? I feel so bad. I don't know. The, I don't know the anthology problem. I think is right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, so what it was, so what it is, it's on Amazon. If you guys want to check it out. So it's actually ghost stories that are being told by the main cast uh -huh. who are kids on a camping trip. Right. And so they're telling ghost stories around the fire. So my part is actually one of those stories, but I actually did mine years before the actual movie was fully shot because it was just the short film. Interesting. And so, yeah, so our part is a little like horror film or whatever, like a little horror short that got added to the main picture. And yeah, that was fun. Thank you for sharing that because I didn't know that. And it um, it's bookended by these characters around a campfire, as you described. And uh, you play opposite Ben Stauber, again, is who is local Las Vegas talent. I think he's in L.A. now. Ben is the, like, I will say this on record. He is the nicest person I have ever met in my life. Like, I don't think anybody can dispute that. He is so incredibly nice. He actually was the one that got me to be a part of my latest horror film, which is Brute 1976. Oh. He recommended me um, to the producers and director and I got an audition and they loved me. And so I got to just be a part of that one. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you want to jump into that one, but that's- No, of course, that. this is a perfect segue into Brute 1976. Yeah. Now, I know very little of it, but I know it recently premiered here locally. Is that accurate? No, it actually premiered in Los Angeles. So it's it's, a, it's an all LA-based crew and cast. I didn't know. Um, I thought it was here. Gosh. Well, they it. filmed it. They filmed it in Nelson's, in Nelson's uh, ghost town. Um, okay. So yes. But I just have to say- it's like the team is just so amazing. I mean, we were out there for, you know, several days like filming and like Nelson's Ghost Town was so open and willing to like let us do all these crazy things. Um, and I mean, it's just it's a it's a really great film and I'm really excited for everybody to see it. It's not officially premiered yet. It has just had an industry screening. So hopefully it'll get picked up for distribution soon so everyone can see it. But I mean, we had a deadline article about it. We've had um, like like major horror outlets are calling it like one of like the great watches of of 2024. So I'm excited for everyone to see it. I got to be a lead in this. So I got to be, you know, a, a black female lead in a horror film. So I'm really excited about this one for everyone to see. And and if you're curious about the the theme or the story, I understand the director um, is a huge fan of like, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, yep. the Hills Have Eyes. So he's imbued that movie with homages to all all we love about those films. And I'm so uh, thankful that you got to be a part of it. And if the industry mags are talking about it, you know it's something special. So I hope it does get picked up and distributed as you described. So thank you for sharing. So now I'd like to, you talked about working in Utah, Louisiana, et cetera. Have there been other locations beyond that that have been terribly far? What's the furthest location you've been to? Louisiana, for sure. Okay. For, for me, since I started my film and television career. Um, I mean, I'm I'm North Carolina raised. So, oh. I mean, you know, going to the East Coast is, is nothing for me. Um, kind of segue into like, you know, just giving advice to actors. I'm so grateful that the industry is no longer just in LA and New York, you know? And so having agents in other markets is just so valuable. I'm fortunate to have an agent in Texas and New Mexico. Um, I get auditions for those markets all the time. Um, you know, I'm honest about where I am and I have booked projects um, in, in New Mexico. Um, I got a Nickelodeon TV show coming out soon. Hopefully when, when they, uh, do the strike, they had to delay production a little bit, but hopefully that's coming out soon. Um, I've filmed other TV shows in New Mexico. Like again, um, I get auditions for Texas stuff all the time. It's just, it's just the market is no longer just in Los Angeles and New York, but in order to compete, you have to have your tools together. And that's something that I really hope that actors understand, you know, it's not a, 
I want to be famous <laughs> kind of thing. And I feel like a lot of times people are just like, I want to be famous. And I'm going to tell you a story and I'm going to tell you a story, which, which I'm hopefully is coming across in a, in a kind and caring way. Um, you know, especially like in scene study classes and things like that, you know, you do these scenes, you do these two page, three page scenes or whatever you work on these characters. But a lot of times, most actors, their first roles are just going to be a one or two liner. It's not going to be these huge roles. You know, those roles come for the independent projects, the the short films, you know, the, fe- the the independent feature films, you're lucky to get those bigger roles when you're just starting out as an actor. But understand that majority of the time, most actors, when they get into the business, it's these five and unders. So five lines, five lines and unders, which they call co-stars pretty much. So I just really hope that actors understand that it's not necessarily just a, hey, show up on set and get a line. I mean, you know, unfortunately this business unlike most professions, like a lawyer or a doctor, you have to have proper credentials to be able to claim that the, like that you are those those roles, you know, like like you have to you have to have all of your degrees and all of your certifications to be a doctor or a lawyer. But an actor, um, anybody off the street can pretty much claim to be an actor. And so, you know, I just hope that people understand that the overnight stardom is very rare. <laughs> You're right. And I think a lot of us dream or hang on to that old adage where, you know, you speak of Hollywood, people being discovered, you know, on the yeah. street, what have you. And that's really not true today. And you have to work on your craft. You have to get your credentials, as you say, or credits if we're talking about the industry and demonstrate your proficiency you know, and your ability to be, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, to travel to these locations and be there and get on your mark and just deliver like you've done consistently in all of your projects. So I thank you for that advice because I don't think people understand the inner workings of the Hollywood or movie making machine. So I like that insight. Thank you. Speaking of actors are there or actresses, is there anyone that you appreciate or follow or are, are, or are a fan of? Oh my gosh. I mean, that's like the list is too long. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, let's, we have plenty of time. Let me know who, you, who you're thinking of. <laughs> oh, I can't even like Viola Davis is, is, is my, like, like I would love to play her daughter at some point in my life. Like I would love to like, that would just, she's just such a powerhouse. I mean, she's an EGOT now. Uh, she's got an EGOT now. So like, that's amazing. Like, yeah. Um, I mean, I really like, there's like, I can't eat, like there's the list is so long. I mean, just just actors who are dedicated to their craft and who um you know just take the business seriously but also like like i like i even love like like viola davis's instagram page and though and though you know like at that level like she's not controlling it herself but but again she talks about it like openly about how the person that controls it is so well rounded in terms of talking about mental health and just all of the um all of just like the important things that are going on in the world mixed with um, her, you know, her fame and her and, and and her journey. You know what I mean? So I just, I just, I just love how people are in a, in a place of power or in a place of, of recognition and, and they do what they can to give back. So like, that's just anybody that does that. Like, I just love when people really just use their platform to be able to speak for everyone and things like that. Like, I just, I just love anybody that is going to just fight for the underdog. Well, and thank you. And I'm going to help you manifest you're playing her daughter one day. So speak it it and it will happen. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I I think this is a perfect time for us to conclude, but you spoke about Instagram. Tell my audience uh, where they can find you there or any other social media handles. My main one is Instagram. So it's Adrian. Uh, underscore McLean on Instagram. And that's A-D-R-I-A-N-E underscore M-C-L-E-A-N. Um, please follow me. Like, let's connect in some kind of way. Um, and yeah, as for an actor out there in any market, I hope that you put your focus into training, getting your proper tools, your headshots, your resumes, and then building a reel. And then really just going after what you love because you do have to love this business because it is not all glitz and glam. (laughs) And with that, I will hit pause and then we'll talk about that after I stop recording. (laughs) 
we're just going to keep it positive this episode. So. <laughs> well, Adrian, thank you. It was such a pleasure. And let's commit to do drag brunch or something here. Leave! <laughs> <laughs> Stop yelling at me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining me on Netflix and Phil. Bye. Bye.